Hello everyone, thank you very much for watching um, and welcome to my Okama tutorial. My name is Nouradin Sadawi, that, that's um, a link to my current personal web page. I'll leave a link at the description at the bottom of this video uh, if, if you want to visit my web page and contact me. Now, um, in this tutorial, I'm going to give you a sort of a, a, for a first push to start programming in OCaml. Uh, I will be using some resources, um, some resources for example from Cornell University or from the uh, uh, John, Hopk John Hopkins University. I'll leave links for the resources at the bottom of this video again. Now the way I'm going to structure this tutorial is um, this will be maybe 25 or 30 videos and um, I will try to keep the video short so you don't get bored of of watching and listening so maybe everybody will be like 8, 9, 10, maybe maximum 15 minutes long and um, I will be in the beginning giving you a sort of um, just basic code construct and then I'll show you how to actually put your code in a source file in a text file and compile it and run executables now why OCaml or in the beginning actually what does, what does OCaml stand for? Well, OCaml is actually Objective Camel, and Camel is a categorical, abstract, and machine language. Uh, OCaml supports functional, imperative, and object-oriented styles. When we mention the word functional, functional programming is just a, a sort of a programming style that sees um, programs as mathematical functions. What we mean by that is we define functions and then apply them to arguments so we can obtain results now because as you know programs are essentially mathematical objects then it's easier to use the power of mathematics to reason about this object about these programs and functional languages usually have a very simple syntax the programs are much shorter than other uh, other programming styles as you will see shorter than imperative shorter than object oriented debugging time is much less than other styles um, the error checking is much much stronger and usually the style is concise is powerful and it's reliable so in 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 functional programming everything is seen or is viewed as a function not only this, but in functional programming, we usually avoid, um, you know, having side effects. If you if you know what that means, usually uh, the assignment statements are very very special. For the use of variables, is also another very distinct uh, feature of programming languages, you, of functional programming languages, or, or functional programming style in, in, in general, you will come to see that when we start doing actual coding, that we don't, we can't, for example, say int i equals 3, and then somewhere in the program say, you know, change the value of i and say i equals 5. That's not uh, how functional programming works. Now, compared to imperative um, compared to imperative programming style in the imperative programming style everything in our program or the way we see programs the way we program in general is that our programs are sequences of statements they are executed one after another until we get the output so we have an input we have a sequence of statements do this then do this then do this maybe do that this computation that computation and then get the result whereas in object-oriented style, we have this idea of having classes and instances of classes and breaking down problems into smaller problems represented in classes and objects and then dealing with them. Now, OCaml supports the three styles, the functional, the imperative, and the object-oriented style. Not only this, but it actually includes an interactive top-level interpreter some people say top level some people say top loop so we'll start with that in the beginning we'll start with the top level or the top loop interpreter we'll see how we can um, uh, declare variables just to for us to learn the basics and then uh, 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 have our own functions and then execute them and then after that we'll move on to compiling 
our programs and running um, and, and running the executables. We in Ocaml we have a bytecode compiler and a native code compiler. We'll come to what these mean in due time and due course. And it comes with a large standard library, very impressive library, many many uh, different uh, tools and many many different functions. And by the way, they, they, they're called modules, not libraries in Ocaml. And then the good thing is that Ocaml is free and open source. So as I said, in Ocaml, the, the, this concept of functional programming, uh, again, that every we see things as functions, we see the um, uh, the program as uh, or also the the whole program as a function or multiple functions. And believe it or not, the power of Ocaml or the power of this uh, functional programming concept is that, for example, we can store a function in a data in, in a data structure. So, for example, in a list or an array or a graph. Yes, we can store functions as elements of data structures. Not only this, but we can pass functions to other functions as as arguments, and then we can have functions as returned objects or returned values from, from other from other functions so before for example we had functions maybe in C or Java that receive primitive types like int, float, string, uh, character maybe or boolean and then return one something like that or maybe, maybe an object or a combination of those no in OCaml not only this we can do that on OCaml of course but on top of that we can actually pass functions as parameters and return them from functions as well as uh, saving them and communicating them in data structures. Now, as for the resources, uh, the resources I mentioned, I will be using uh, material from this website, from the John Hopkins University. I will provide a link at the bottom of this video, introdu introduction to OCaml, so you can have a look at the basics uh, and then the built-in types, functions, and things like that, as you can see, and also this material for a, for a course from Cornell University the course is called data structure data structures I'm sorry and functional programming and they have a large list of lectures and a lot of material so for example to have a look at the notes or, or the code to learn from and play with this is actually a quite an impressive number of lectures uh, I think we have about how many yes about 27 lectures with the materials, with things like that, and they go. They actually go into advanced uh, uh, stuff in in OCaml. We we'll, we won't probably cover those. We will cover just the basics, but that will give us at least a good introduction or a good start to um, uh, to learn OCaml and do the advanced stuff. One more thing I wanted to mention here is that um, let me write that down. This is I. This is the first course. This is the first video tutorial. This is the first OCaml video tutorial in English that I have come across. I.e., I haven't seen anything in English so far. So hopefully, this will be appreciated. Hopefully, people will find this useful, and it will give them at least the first push to start programming in OCaml and appreciate the power, the beauty and the conciseness of this language. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.